Okay, I've been asked whether you can actually change the O-rings in the uh, service valves on these split system air conditioners. Uh, there's an awful lot of problems with these valves leaking. Uh, it's just a monster. Uh, probably well over 60-70% of the leaks in split system air conditioners are at the service valves. Usually it's because the valve has been overheated uh, when the brazing was done, but I've been seeing quite a few of them fail that did not have an overheat problem. You know, years down the road they'd start leaking. There's an O-ring in them, you can replace it. It's not something I absolutely recommend. Uh, I would rather replace the valve, but then I'm a service tech, so I tend to want jobs to be done and over with. But if you want to replace the O-ring in one of these, it very possibly may work. And I'll show you how to do it. Okay, here we're looking down at the top. Pull this cap off. This cap should not be really tight. It says turn it one-sixth of a turn once it contacts. This part is not a sealing cap. Uh, many, many people have tried to make this into a sealing cap. Uh, put oil rings in it, put pipe dope on it. I, I just don't think it works. It usually works for a little while and then it blows loose. I've actually had these caps uh, that were tightened down very tight uh, in high pressure systems where uh, uh, heat pumps that uh, their high side pressure has actually blown this cap off. I mean I've I've seen it happen, so uh, eh, don't use this to seal, it's just more of a dust cap than anything else. Okay, we're going to take this apart and look at what's inside. Uh, before we get started on this, uh, it should seem fairly obvious, but the power should be off and obviously the refrigerant must be removed from the system, otherwise that thing's going to come flying out of there and nail you in the forehead or something. Uh, so the refrigerant charge has to be removed from the system. Now here I've got a set of uh, pliers in here and I'm going to pull this out. It's never as easy as it seems so I'm not going to subject you to all that. I will just show it taken out but this is one of the types of uh, pliers you'd use. Okay uh, there's the uh, uh, snap ring pulled out and you're ready to pull the plunger up. Okay, now your plunger's out. There's your O ring right there. Uh, you need to find a replacement O ring for it, put it in, set her back down. Okay, there's your O ring. Need to match it up with the one that's the same diameter uh, and the same size. Okay, here's your new one on. Go ahead and put your plunger back in. And be sure you clean this thing up better than I've cleaned it up here. That's a little sloppy. Make sure all that crap's out of there. Be sure it's uh, all wiped out. Okay, there it is with it uh, reinstalled. Obviously, when I turn this all the way down, it's off. Uh, what we're going to want to do is bring this out so it just touches. Do not reef this thing wide open. Get it so it just touches uh, the snap ring. You're done at that point. Uh, pressure this up. Uh, I would be pressuring it up with nitrogen or CO2. Uh, get your pressure up to about, depending on what type of unit it is, if it's a 410A unit, uh, I'd pressure it up to about 400 pounds. If it's uh, R22, uh, you're not going to pressure it up quite as high. Take a look at the model and serial plate. There will be a maximum pressure, low side and high side, 
don't exceed the maximum pressure for low side when you're pressure testing these things. Uh, some of those are as low as 150 pounds on the older ones, so you need to watch that. Watch very closely for leaks. I got a video earlier on here showing what the leaks look like on these service valves. Might take a look at that. Uh, but absolutely make sure there's no leaks now when you put it back in. The whole word here is methodical. Be sure everything works when you're done. And that's it, and good luck on that one. Not a really recommended repair, but uh, certainly could be done.